there guys and welcome back to another FPV guy video. As you know, it's, 20, it's CES 2018 and I'm trolling around here trying to find toys or I mean camera drones that I personally am interested in. So I'm not always showing you everything I find because a lot of the stuff frankly is crap that I don't want to fly and you shouldn't be flying it either. And one of the things that stopped me here is the Evolve and the X-Dynamics, is that it? Yeah, X-Dynamics. Uh, hi, I'm Mari Covington. Uh, yeah, this is uh, our latest product, due out in March. In March? Yeah. And, and what's stopping me here is, you can see up front, we have a really nice gimbal with a fairly large, large camera. That is a one inch category. I'm always laughing at the one inch because it's a 16 millimeter. Yeah. Sensor, I don't know how that became one inch, but it's a large sensor. Yeah, it grew. So every drone you see out there that advertises one inch is using a 16 millimeter diagonal sensor. But it's a large sensor with a wide dynamic range and, and a very photographic quality. What they have here is a fairly large by a phantom size, fairly large beefy aircraft with a long range control system. And more importantly, up here is a release button so you can release and change the camera. So I'm gonna get back to that. Before we get into interchangeable cameras and everything else, let's get the basics out of the way. Murray, talk to me about the aircraft. How long time can this fly? The flight time here uh, is around just over 20 minutes with the current payload. Uh, just shy of that with our micro four thirds. And that, that's the problem, of course, when you throw a bigger camera on there, it becomes heavier. And by the time you throw a heavy lens, guess what? Yeah. But on a shoot, I mean, how long? To, I have never been in the air for more than five minutes anyway. Usually, the customers who want this are on, you know, semi-professional, professional gigs. You're going to have your shots planned out. You're not there floating around hunting. You you plan your shot. You get up. You shoot it. Like you said, you're usually down. Yeah. I mean, in a shorter period. Of time. The shoot. The shoot we basically do is get the aircraft in the sky, confirm we're rolling tape, do the take, then we land while they reset for the next take. Absolutely. So we're not really in the air for 20 minutes, but we usually change battery after one or two shoots because I always want to have at least 50% battery when I land. Yeah. We don't want to have an emergency over a set. Now, the other thing everybody talks about today is range. And I know there's two stories on this one yeah so it's kind of interesting it goes five kilometers out so it's totally legit on range mm -hmm. i'm thinking it's using 900 megahertz but i'm not uh, going to pin yeah. you down on that but talk to me about the one kilometer benchmark that's really interesting so we have a zero latency technology built in so we have a five kilometer range but we like the idea you know if you're flying especially close to other objects so there is a trade-off there however the amount of times you fly outside a kilometer are very small. Usually people aren't or flying that meters. far away. Yeah. So it only affects maybe 5% of the time it may affect you. So, so what it really means is up to one kilometer you get 1080p zero latency at 60 frames per second. Now when you fly further out you're probably ending up with say 720, 30 frames per second exactly. because it's a lot less bandwidth. But, but that means when you are doing a shoot, you can feed HDMI 1080, 60 out to the DP who can then decide if they like the shot or not. And they can see it incredibly clearly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which is not something we used to buy a secondary downlink for the unit. It's definitely when you have a director on set, if, you, if you've got a big setup and you have a monitor set up, run an HDMI, they're seeing an incredible image. They're able to really understand what it's going to look like in post afterwards. Yeah. So it's a good tool. So that so that's really what's unique about this. It's kind of a phantom size, but it's cinematographer features. Yeah, we we basically took you know similar platforms. We don't even mention names, and we made it a little bit smaller. We. We went big with the motors. Uh, yeah, that's BV sockets. Yeah, and it just it responds incredibly quickly in the air, also for safety. Um, you know, this isn't uh, find all the cheapest parts you can find and put a drone together to get it to market. This is a little bit of a hot rod. You know what I mean? It's going to move quick. Yeah. And we use you know. Three so new parts. let me put this one down and we'll take a look at the controller here. All right. So the controller is a clamshell, think laptop. 
because you essentially have a full-on laptop up here. You have solid-state storage on top, and you have your aircraft control operations down here, and you have your camera view up here. So, what does this do? What are some of the features so, here? Probably it says no GPS. Yeah, go figure. We're in we're indoors. Um, so you can load, preload maps here. Uh, so you're basically looking at all your mapping software, your interface is here on this screen. Uh, Android uh, OS, and up here you just have your 1080 60p display. Uh, so you know you, you're not inter you don't have all your extra settings on top of your display. You have two separate yeah, displays. So all the settings are down here, and you can switch between flight parameters or into camera parameters. So that gives you like you kind of separate state and government, or rather church and government, yeah. a little bit here because if you once you have your flight parameters, you want to go in and deal with the camera. You don't want to deal with flight parameters when you're setting up cameras. This really is a mini computer. It's four gigs of RAM. Uh, it's got an SSD built in, so if you're flying, happen to show up and go, oh my gosh, I forgot my micro SD, you know, it never happens, but if it happens. You get your 1080, 60 frames per second straight absolutely. down and record it? Right here, right here. Sweet! And uh, also, it can link to Instagram, Facebook. So Instagram, um, obviously I'm not gonna Instagram high definition video, but how does it connect? Does it have a SIM card? Uh, it doesn't have a SIM card, it uses Wi-Fi. It uses your Wi-Fi connection, your hotspot, and... So, so my phone is actually the hotspot. Exactly. Now looking at this thing, it is really cleanly put together. Spending a little bit of time with it in your hand, you end up with very incredibly well balanced. I've expected the screen to be a lot heavier, but it actually balances in my hand. Up on the top here, you find kind of a weather cover, and underneath here, if I can get it up, underneath that is HDMI. There you go. Micro HDMI out so that you can get an HDMI signal out for a larger screen. And over here, you have your micro USB and also charging. So that's just unit right here with the full control panel in the middle. Remember I said we we're gonna come back to the larger camera. The reason is it's you can plop it right off here. It's a quick release. And here is a micro four thirds, standard lens right here. You can change between different lenses and it balances out. This is a full on micro four thirds camera with 4K video option, interchangeable. What it means really is, when these start shipping this summer, you can buy the one inch camera option. Then later in the year, these are supposed to ship in November, you'll be able to buy one of these cameras and upgrade your one inch camera option. So that basically gets you a full on, I wouldn't call it cinematography camera, but you get a full on broadcast capable camera. Something I would add, we're developing, right now this is a wide angle lens, we're developing two more lenses that will be the same weight okay. uh, as, the, uh, as this lens. So you're not having to use a counterbalance. So you're just plopping them in without having to balance them. Right, we're Brilliant. basically, we're in the process of hand picking a couple lenses that we like that are you know, similar color space, are gonna be consistent if you cut them together. Ah, nice. And, I mean, because we've all... So it's not going to be a bluish look on one lens and a little and purplish warm, on another yeah. one. Yeah. Like, cannons are warm, size tend to be cooler, so we want it, you know, Let, that Let's get consistent. the size look, for heaven's sake. Yeah, right. If, if we must choose. The lens on the other camera is, uh, it creates a very nice flat horizon. It, you know, there's so no... Direct linear? Yeah. And that, that's the other thing with a lot of drones, they have like a fisheye look. Yeah. So having a rectilinear shot is already much more for video production. Absolutely. Now, the last thing I noticed when I first started picking it up, there's a little bit of flex in the legs. The body itself, because it's carbon fiber, is rock solid. But the legs, and I had to ask about this, they're actually meant to be sacrificial. So if you do come down really, really hard, they are intended to bust the leg, but save the camera and the rest of the body. And while I hate to break anything, being me, I break shit, and I would much rather break the leg. So there you have it. These things are gonna be shipping somewhere over the summer, and the four, micro four-thirds camera are gonna be coming out sometime in November. 
and we are they are in Southern California so stay tuned we're gonna try to do an unbox and get some flying and get some actual camera analysis for you and also get some hands-on how this works so stay tuned make sure you click here in the corner of the screen for subscribe we got more CES 2018 videos coming up and Murray thank you for your time pleasure